Hello everyone. I want to do a quick introduction to the Gilded Age and the Progressive Era. These are the time periods we're going to be covering these first few weeks of class. Um, I have a PDF file called uh, the Gilded Age and Progressive Era Timeline and, and Statistics. If you want to pull that up and kind of look at it as we go over things here. So the first era that we're going to examine in this class is known as the Gilded Age. It occurs from roughly the 1870s into the 1890s. This period gets its name from a book written by Mark Twain and Charles Dudley Warner. Uh, the book is called The Gilded Age, A Tale of Today. In that book, the authors brought attention to what they believed were some of the characteristics of the age, uh, greed, privilege, and corruption. Something that is gilded is covered with precious gold on the outside, but on the inside is something of lesser value. Looking from the outside, this period of American history is one of progress, improvement, and technology rising overall wages, and increase in population. But underneath, many problems are festering, such as poverty, corruption, and undemocratic developments. The people living in the latter half of the 19th century did not refer to this point in history as the Gilded Age. Rather, later historians popularize the term and apply it backwards. Uh, this era also has other names, such as the Age of Enterprise and the Age of Steel. Now this era is not well known by most Americans. Even most people who teach history tend to ignore this era. One historian referred to the years 1865 to 1896 as historical flyover country and the golden age of facial hair. If you look at a picture of the presidents from this period, you'll, you'll understand why. But it's during the Gilded Age that the United States goes through some of its biggest changes as a nation. Um, the Republic had just witnessed the biggest event in its history, the Civil War. Somewhere between 620 and 850,000 Americans had been killed in that war. That's soldiers, not civilian deaths. Otherwise, it would have been much higher. Much of the South is in ruin. Many of the most impressive cities have been destroyed, including Atlanta and Richmond. One-fourth of the South's white men of military age have been killed. One-half of Southern rail stock lies in ruins. Uh, the end of slavery has wiped out two billion in wealth uh, in slaves in the southern states. The 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, known as the Civil War Amendments, uh, that ended slavery, made black people citizens of the United States, and gave black men the right to vote. These amendments have changed American social customs and institutions. The size of the federal government increases by leaps and bounds during the Civil War. Uh, just to, one example to show you how. In 1860, the federal budget was $78 million. In 1865, it was $1.3 billion. So that's the start and the end of the Civil War. Even in 1867, two years after the war ended, it was still at $377 million. So America changes a lot during this era. The population of America is exploding. In 1860, there were 31 million Americans. In 1900, there are 76 million Americans. This is due to a high birth rate and immigration. America is transforming from an agrarian nation of farmers and small shop owners to an industrial nation of huge factories and factory laborers. In 1860, there's something like 140,000 factories with an industrial output of 2 billion. In 1900, there are over 500,000 factories with an industrial output of 13 billion. More and more people are wage dependent, meaning that they make money by selling their labor. Before industrialization, many people sold the fruits of their labor, such as what they grew on their own farm or shoes they made in their own shop. Workers for the first time on a massive scale do not see or know the boss or the owner of the company they work for. This lack of familiarity between employer and empl employee along with low wages and bad working conditions will lead to strained relations between capital and labor not yet seen in American history. Uh, technologies are making huge advances. In 1869, the Transcontinental Railroad is completed, linking the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. In 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge is completed. Uh, railroads are connecting the formerly isolated regions of the nation, creating a truly national marketplace where cattle from Texas can be slaughtered in Chicago and sold to consumers on the East Coast. Uh, America is rapidly urbanizing, going from a nation where a large majority of people live in towns of 2,500 people or less, to one in which an increasing number of people live in cities. 
1860, there were only six cities with a population of 100,000 or more. By 1890, there are almost 30 cities with a population of 100,000 or more. Um, some Americans during the Gilded Age are becoming super rich, while many Americans are becoming super poor. More and more Americans are living in slums and squalor than ever before. Um, these are just a number of the changes we'll kind of look at throughout this study of the Gilded Age and Progressive Era. Now, after the Gilded Age comes the Progressive Era. The emphasis of this era is on how to fix the problems created during the Gilded Age. We will examine how those people focused on reform, uh, those people who were focused on reform, they're known as progressives. We'll look at how they work to restrain the power of big business and regulate it more. Uh, they also work to improve public health, ease the symptoms of poverty, and make the democratic process, in their view, more responsive to the people. Uh, progressives felt the solution to the, these problems uh, were to make government more powerful. Now, in summary, whether rightly or wrongly, historians have branded the Gilded Age as one of inequality, corruption, and domination by big business and a laissez-faire, leave-it-alone approach by the government. The progressive era they view as one of as an attempt to fix these problems through an activist government focused on the common good instead of what's good for the individual. Now, the way historians describe the Gilded Age and the Progressive Era is probably extreme in both directions. The Gilded Age was not all about corruption and greed, while the Progressive Era was not all about enlightened rule by the government. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle, so keep that in mind as we learn about uh, history throughout this course. A lot of times the truth lies in the middle of what people tell you. Um, so that's kind of an introduction to the Gilded Age and Progressive Era, and that's what we'll learn about these first few weeks.